So join today uh, for a very special video diary. Um, why don't you introduce yourself for us? Hi, I'm Simon James and I'm the lead animator on Lego Worlds. Oh, thanks for joining us, Simon. Um, so uh, basically we're going to do a new uh, sort of dev, dev diary. We've done a few text ones in the past. Now the plan is to do some video ones and I think animation is probably the best one to start that on. So It makes sense. It does. Uh, so the idea now is that we're going to go through some of the sort of animation work you guys have done over the past, oh, need. Must well, be nearly two years you've been doing some of the stuff on his, is it? Maybe not that long, but Maybe not yeah, that long, yeah, a, a while. Yeah, not far. Oh, yeah. So, um, so I guess the sort of best sort of question to ask is, what's the sort of the early process that would go into animating some of these sort of characters, creatures? Well, one of the key things is to um, is to decide with design what we really want to get out of the game. You know, what what kind of uh, character and personality do we want to get across, and also. Um, what abilities do you want to give your character in the game? Obviously, some some games might be very combat heavy or mission heavy. Um, Lego Worlds is really about exploring, creating, discovering things, and uh, and really enjoying yourself. You know. Yeah. So obviously, we're currently watching the monitor having a shower, which is well, he needs one. Fantastic. He needs one. He smells. There you go. <laughs> and a nice slip on the uh, on the tiles. Yeah. So uh, obviously, one of the sort of main differences, I guess, with uh, Lego Worlds to anything we've done in the past is it's it's very free, I guess you could say in terms yeah. of movement and range. So, what kind of what kind of challenges would you say you found because of that? Like obviously, there's no set sort of path in terms of you must do this, you must do this. Is that maybe raised some new challenges, or has it been kind of nice to be have the sort of change lo uh, loosened a little bit? Yeah, it has been nice actually. It's been um, really interesting. I mean, one of the key things you want to do is just make everything in Lego Worlds fun. So you can see here, I mean, we've got a very simple prop of a bed and you saw the Minotaur in the shower before. Now, rather than just placing these so you can create a nice house, we thought, why not be able to interact with it and have a bit of fun with it? So, um, it, you know, that was really one of my key goals going in was to establish an animation style and a set of abilities where you could really interact, um, interact with stuff and just have a lot of fun with stuff. Yeah, that's great. So um, I guess with that, the, the thing to focus here is you guys are obviously heavily involved with the characters, the props, and is there, and the creatures themselves are they your main sort of yeah, focus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, you can see here one of the one of the things again we wanted to do was make it a lot of fun. You can ride these creatures on the land, in the sea, in the air. It's basically a case of you can do whatever you want, wherever you want. That's great. Um, so regarding things like the animations, obviously we're going to have the... It's going to whistle a horse, horse in yeah. there. So, yeah, there's the horse in. so um, regarding how we would break this down, so on a character-by-character -character basis, would you have like a set chart of things so it's like, okay, I need this particular animation, this particular animation, or is it kind of you're able to crisscross a little bit? And oh, yeah, yeah. There's a certain amount of animation you can share, and some of these interactions are shared, but you can see a, a council tax. <laughs> Lottery. <laughs> yes. So... So obviously all the items here, this is the creator mailbox, um, where she's, I think she's about to reach into it, isn't she? And is this the monster yeah. attack? Nice. Yeah, and another, another nice thing we've got um, on some of these interactions is there's some variations. So as you play in the game, you know, if you get in the post box, it's like, there she goes. oh, what, there she goes, yeah. what's in there? <laughs> and there's a little monster in there that I said, oh. Um, <laughs> you know, the same if you jump in the swimming pool, there's several different variations of jumping in the pool, uh, playing with the ball in the pool, the same with the shower and the bed. Um, it, it's a, just a really nice way of just, just adding a, a layer of fun that we don't normally have. So we've seen the Yeti just come up. Um, obviously he's quite interesting because he's got a different kind of head to most yeah, of the characters. So yeah. how much more work would have to go into that, particularly because obviously we have this like, special face technique that we have yeah, to Yeah, quite well. a bit, but I mean, we've got a really good character team. We've got a really good rigging team. So they give us the controls we need. Um, but yeah, the, the Yeti, you have to do a pass on all his... Um, he's got his own unique animations anyway, but you have to do that little extra layer of, of animation for his stupid face. <laughs> yes. he's, he's a bit dopey. He's an interesting one, um, obviously. More interesting. And, he, and he likes sausages. <laughs> it would be weird if he didn't in some way. Well, Yetis, you know, <laughs> Yetis and sausages, they love them. So, um, obviously, one of the things you've seen here is interactions with some of the animals uh, is, is yeah. pretty cool. Um, regarding things like uh, the animals themselves, I guess, <laughs> it's, just, it's just, I love the way he runs away. And, obviously this, <laughs> and this is a zombie cheerleader. Oh, she's she's great. Goes, yeah, so she's great yeah. as well. So, um, 
regarding things like the animals and even the creatures and sort of zombies and that as well, how much kind of research do you have to do into some of these animals, like the dolphin, the manta ray, the octopus and that? Yeah, we do, we do quite a lot, actually. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I really like to get a sense of uh, the background of a character and... Um, you know, really understand the creature, even though we're doing it in a, in a Lego way and a very fun way. Um, it's important, you know, to ride a crocodile like a surfboard, as <laughs> as you can see here. As he does. You know, but um, yeah, doing the research gives us lots of ideas, and as you can see, we like to go way beyond uh, what you can do in the real world and really give the player a lot of fun. They don't like this horse. <laughs> I'll kill that. So, yeah. Got to eat, obviously, yeah. yeah. Natural, you natural can predator. See, so it's yeah, you can eat. see some nice sort of variations as well in the ride animations. So. Um, every creature, every time as a minifig you ride a creature, it's got its own unique animes. Um, and the same with the interactions. That's great. And obviously so. we're, we're back into the swimming pool with one of the yeah. funniest ones. <laughs> it's one of the sort of early classic uh, animations we've seen since, <laughs> since that creature. Yeah, it was quite an there. early one. Yeah. But as you, as you can see, I mean, that's a good example of the variations as well. Rather than just do one, you know, you jump in the pool and swim about, we had a bit of fun with it. This guy has become kind of synonymous with the actual game, not just the screen, but the way he goes about <laughs> things. So, yeah. Um, interestingly, he has actually a different entire torso, so he's obviously different in terms of the Lego minifigures have set chests and yeah. whereas his arms actually clip on in a different way yeah so. well that, I mean again we're very faithful to the original toys and, and how they can move and, and how they can so regarding him so he would need a completely new like no, no pun intended skeleton I would almost assume because of those clips or would um, he be able to use the same sort of modelling techniques similar yeah there, there's a few uh, oh, he's just having a rest there <laughs> um, and what's this oh. kangaroo doing <laughs> Oh, the old, there it is, the one-two shuffle. Yeah. Sometimes more work maybe goes in, I think, than even some of us would realise, particularly when it comes to, you know, this guy has to interact with this piano, for example, and yeah. do his concerto just as well as some of the other minifigures would have to. So with that in mind, do, when you do sort of things, for example, this, this piano piece, um, do you have to sort of test these sort of items out with a few different characters just to make sure? Because obviously you've got things like hats would be potentially an issue yeah, for some issues yeah, as well. You might, you know, you just need to make sure they work. Yeah, there we go. Um, so this is a fairly new character of ours, the robot. I, um, love, I love this character. He's so good. So he's got quite... I think he's quite different in the sense. He's got quite a few different moving parts. Obviously, looking at his back, obviously, he's got the sort of the twist, yeah, the winding yeah. gear. Um, but also as well, he's... It's he's, called a key, Chris. Is it a key? That's what it is. Sorry, <laughs> I, sorry, I'm showing my, showing my youth here a bit. But also as well, his, his entire torso is actually animated in the sense he's got this moving decal sort of set up. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, is that... How much more considerable work do you have to put in for these sort of things? Is it quite a lot well, to do? Well, actually, the decals, uh, the character team set them up. So oh, okay. so we're, we're not animating those little um, changes on the torso decal. But oh, great, we so we can flash the lights and yeah, we've got sure. facial expressions. <laughs> so his eyes can flash red. Um, and we've got the key as an attachment so we can animate that moving around almost as if it's powering him. And there, he's, he's just riding the octopus, so his key doesn't need to go round. Yeah, the yeah, octopus that unfortunately lost his uh, Twitter war to the famous land shark. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll, he'll win one day. I'll listen to this. <laughs> this is great. Um, again, octopus, quite quite flexible creatures and moving around. What kind of... Obviously, you're trying to, you mentioned earlier, trying to stick true to the Lego like brand and the toys mm. and the way they work. And uh, obviously, we've got a mechanic now oh, sort of showing cool up some well. great skills. How... <clears throat> How, what, how, what sort of guidelines and restrictions do you guys set yourselves to make sure that it's not, I guess, too humanised, too realistic? Do you have like a set sort of limit? Yeah, I mean, we tend to do a character guide, and obviously I work very closely with the animators to, to really get the kind of personality or the fun that we want. So as you can see here, I mean, with the football, yeah. it's not a case of just kicking the football around. Andre, I think it? that was an Andre Kinchelski move there. Yeah. Not in not bad, there's a blast of the past. Uh, and then obviously we got ourselves a police officer with his owner and coffee. And, yeah. and then but, riding a lion. But not which, so typical riding a lion, which no. kind of is the, be the beautiful chaos of Lego world in some ways, isn't yeah. it, I guess. So um, regarding the, again, these sort of animals, obviously, how much um, variation does size kind of play? Because obviously the squirrel's sort of chasing after you. He's kind of small and easy. But do the big creatures sometimes pose a bigger challenge for the animation side of things? Or is that more... A sort of model and collision sort of issue for other people. It can people. be, yeah, there can be issues, um, and it depends on the interactions. But as well, you see, all, all the ride animals are unique, 
So when the minifig gets on the line, when he interacts with him here, that's all unique to that character, um, which is just something really nice. We, we wanted to really give the players of LEGO Worlds that, that different experience where if you really had a lion, you know, you'd want to cuddle it and yeah. you'd want to ride it, wouldn't you? Well, there are some very brave people out there who do try doing that. I don't, think I, would true, ever, yeah. I don't think I would ever cuddle a lion. I think I'm yeah. not that brave. Um, obviously, then we've got the... And you can see in the background, see the huskies yeah. chasing the octopus. I'm, I'm, we were trying to record something here where I think this was when we were trying to do the, redo the takes on the mailbox, but we saw these two huskies just sort of harassing the, yeah. Uh, yeah. the octopus in the background. That was pretty But funny. they're really lovable as well. So. Yeah. So uh, Again, this is an example of... Um, you know, just interacting with creatures. Again, what would you, you know, as a child, what would you want to do if you were surrounded by huskies and lions? You'd want to play with them, tickle them, ride them. And here he is, the and a shark, of ever course. famous land shark. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> so, bashing his way around everything. Yeah. Because so, again, we we could have just, you know, yeah, you can swim on it in the water, but we thought, well. I don't want to be restricted to that. Why not jump around on land? <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, how much time would go into... Uh, on a, I mean, it's probably asking for a piece of string's length here, but like regarding a character like this shark, for example, who has obviously very... He's got, you know, pretty different animations in the yeah, water and on land. Yeah, he's got a lot of yeah. How much sort of time would have to go into that? Oh, there'd be, a, the, yeah, there'd be a good few weeks. Yeah, weeks. An, an animator would spend probably three or four weeks doing a, doing a creature and a very complicated creature like, like this octopus. Um... But I think it adds so much value, and it's quite a different experience to our normal games. Um, I mean, often you can ride a horse or different vehicles, um, but this is a lot more interactive and, and a lot more fun, I think. Yeah, so I'm just trying to think of all the different states they would have at the moment. So obviously he's got on surface, yeah, underwater, Yeah, he can swim on the surface, he can on swim land. under the water, he can dive up and down. Yeah. Um, I mean, and these animations aren't complete. We've um, still, you know, oh, we've still go. got so a bit of polish to I've that. actually slowed this down a little bit because this, this, we had a pretty short clip, obviously, of the kangaroo. But this one's a bit longer <laughs> where the high fall sort of state, so if you jump off a cloud, they have an entire... Yeah. So we're, across, we're grabbing the beak of the ostrich here and it's yeah. the tail of the kangaroo. So we'll try and let, we won't give them all away, we'll let the users sort of experience it. Yeah. But this... I think this guy's another pretty iconic character, the ostrich who, I think one of the very first images was a vampire and an ostrich. It's yeah, kind of like one of those yeah. moments where you're just like, yes, people yeah. have totally got this. So burying its head and a nice little backflip. So yeah, I guess it, it, that's kind of the exaggeration, isn't it, you were talking about in some exactly, ways. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's also, it, it's encouraging the player to interact with more things. If you, if you ride an ostrich and you get all these different animations, you're also going to think, well, what happens if I ride a husky or an octopus or a shark? Shark or the, the camel is another pretty interesting mm. one. Sort of catch, uh, has almost like a surfboard <laughs> yeah. animation on that one. And well. of course, we've still got plenty of unique right. minifigs as well. They, you know, yeah, the interactive girl obviously mm. has like a sort of airy, spacey sort of yeah, walk. Yeah, so it's as if she's bounding around yeah. in space. Yeah, and the camel, yeah. the camel's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'm just waiting for him to do what yeah. we know. Oh, well, huskies again! Huskies are <laughs> I didn't notice that before when I was yeah, they're attacking a shark. <laughs> they're really so, aggressive. Yeah, so obviously, <laughs> camels are also kind of aggressive. And what happens when you grab a tail? <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, and then this is one of our sort of other kind of unique creatures. Not rideable, not usable, but he's worth sort of keeping an eye on as well. Because he's again, it's a, this would be an entirely different sort of setup, wouldn't it, for this kind oh, of? Oh yeah, yeah. So this was just a little. Um, he's from the power miners, so he's a little rock monster. Yeah, and he is. They are tiny. I didn't realise how small these guys yeah, really are until yeah. I saw one on your desk uh, quite yeah. recently. And I think that's something else that's probably worth sort of sharing is. Um, before we get into this, is you work exclusively, and I'll put a picture up at the end of this, um, with a tablet and a pen. You don't yeah. use a mouse at all. Yeah. No. So, but you even mentioned to me that even at home, when you're just surfing the webpack, you just use the pen. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I, could, so I couldn't use a mouse. So, so yeah. I tried doing it, and I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> put my head around this pen. So, um, and here's a sort of a bit of a teaser yeah. for everyone is this, there we go, camels and dolphins dancing to the rock guitar. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Sai, thanks very, very much for taking the time out to do this. We really appreciate it. You're welcome, Chris. And, um, Thank you. Look out for more of these video diaries. Thanks very much.